actually move with respect to radio mobile and your precautionary mobile. Now we will study what causes the shift in the demand for money or what we call the LPC curve, which, are liquidity, which is our liquidity preference curve. So any increase in the demand for money, this means an income, an increase in demand for liquidity will lead to a rightward shift in the LPC, that's the liquidity preference curve, and any decrease or fall in the demand for money, which is your liquidity, demand for liquidity will lead to a leftward shift of the liquidity preference curve. Let's look at some of the reasons which can bring this about. Now, first, we've just got a list over here and then we'll go over them one by one. First, size of the income, frequency of payments, we will find that this has a direct relationship. With liquidity of, uh, of demand for money, this has an inverse relationship. Then seasons of the year, use of credit cards, change in the price level. This means if there is an increase in the price level, there's inflation, or whether there's a decrease in the price level, prices of goods and services have gone down, when there is inflation. So we will see what happens to the LPC. Then uh, this change is different from the expectations. This means if there's a change in expectations, that will also bring about a shift in the LPC, but we will see in what direction. Then we have expectations about changes in exchange rates. We know this is going to impact the speculatory demand for money. So let's start with the first one, size of the income. Uh, first let's understand it, then we look at this. Uh, students, if you have a larger income, you are likely to do more transactions, you are likely to buy more goods and services. So essentially when there is an increase, what we call normal and national income, um, we can talk about one person's income, but since we are doing a macro thing, we say when there is a rise in national income, there is going to be a rise in the transactionary demand for money. So the major determinant of L1, as we call it, L1 being our active balances. Then there is going to be an increase, so the LPC will shift to the right. Okay? The bigger people's money income, the greater the expenditure, and the bigger is the transactionary demand for active balances. So if income rises, it will lead to a right word shift in LPC. That is an easy concept to understand. And like I said, there's a direct relationship. If income goes down, people will require less money, they will do less transactions, and they will require or demand less money, and the demand for money will shift to the left. Okay, now let's look at frequency of payments. Students, what is frequency of payments? This means how many times, for example, you are paid in a year or in a month. So let's first we have to assume that the income for two people, A and B, is the same, $1,000 or something like that. We will uh, break it up into numericals in a bit. First, uh, let's understand what is happening. So I have $1,000 I'm paid at the end of the month, and there is somebody else who's paid the same $1,000 for a month, but is paid in four equal installments. So this person is paid weekly. Uh, this person is paid $50 at the end of the first week, to $50 at the end of the second week, third week, and fourth week. So students, at any point in time, how much money would I be carrying with me for my transactionary purposes? Because I have to go through the whole month, I will be carrying a larger balance, on an average maybe $500. The person who is on a weekly uh, basis, for example, getting, so he knows that after one week he's going to get another $50. After another week he's going to get another $50. So at any point in time, he may not require to hold large amounts of cash balances. So the demand for liquidity will be lower for him and would be higher for him. All right? This is presented over here. If a person gets his pay daily, he will demand less cash money because he knows that tomorrow he's going to get another payment. On the other hand, if time gap is more, a person will demand more money to carry on his daily transactions. If the frequency with which people are paid, so this affects the L1. The less frequently they are paid, the greater the level of money balances that they will require to tie them over until the next payment. For example, people pay dollar hundred weekly, they'll have less cash balance with them on an average than people pay dollar four hundred. So 400 is the monthly payment, 100 is the weekly payment, so it comes out to be $400 per month. Income for the month is the same in both cases, but monthly paid people will have a much higher demand for active balances than weekly paid. Alright? So there's an inverse relationship between that. We go on to the next one, season of the year. Uh, students, if, you, if there is Eve uh, approaching, 
there is um, Ramzan approaching, people will tend to keep more cash balances because they need to carry on their transactions. Now, in their case, they've got Christmas, if you think they have Thanksgiving, so they have to buy gifts, they have to make transactions with that. So the demand for money will be higher at such time when such seasons of the year, like we say, appear. So demand for money will go up at that time, the NPC will shift to the right. Now let's talk about use of credit cards. What's one of credit cards? Credit card means I still I don't have the money with me in the bank right now, but I can make any transaction and later on I can make a payment to the credit card company. Right? So do I need to hold a lot of balances with me? I don't because I have credit card with me. So the increased use of credit cards in recent years has reduced both the transactions and precautionary demand for money. In fact, the precautionary demand for money, theory says, has come down so to such a low level that maybe even zero. Because if there is an emergency, I have my credit card, I have a certain amount which I'm allowed to spend on my credit card, so I will just use my credit card in case an emergency arises. So the possession of credit card reduces or even eliminates the need to hold precautionary balances for many people. So that takes care of the credit cards. Easy to understand. Now let's talk about the change in the price level. Uh, students, let's assume that my household expenses are 200,000 rupees, so 2 lakh rupees, like we say. Okay. Now, if say, this is the ghar ka karcha, you can say, or the amount of money which I need for transactions on, on a monthly basis. Now, let us say that goods and services go up in price. This means there is inflation. Okay, so uh, prices of all goods and services are going to rise. Generally, of goods and services are going to rise. So this means that I cannot make do with this 2 lakh rupees or 200,000 rupees, right? I need more money for that. So if price level goes up, demand for money increases. And if price level goes down, I don't need so much money to conduct the transactions for the month, which means that my uh, household expenses will not be 2 lakh, they will probably be 1 lakh 75,000, depending upon how much has been the change in the prices of goods and services, right? So on an average, when prices of goods and services go down or go up, Remember, it's not all goods and services going up. We say average. So, depending upon the average price level going up or going down, the demand for money will increase or decrease. That is very simple. Okay, a fall in the price level will lead to a fall in the demand for money. For transaction purposes, your LPC curve will shift to the left. Now, let's take up the next point, which is the expectations about price changes. This is slightly different from the price level actually changing. Now, when I expect the price level to change, what am I going to do? Am I going to sit with that money at home? Or am I going to go and buy that good or service? This means if I'm expecting the price level to go up, I will go right now and buy that good instead of holding cash balances with me. We have seen this often happen, um, happen when, for example, there's an announcement that the price of petrol, for example, is going to go up at 12 o'clock at night at such and such a time. What happens? So many people just rush the uh, gas stations to get that uh, gas tank, uh, petrol tank filled up. Why? Because they know it's going to become more expensive after the low block. So they're not going to hold money balances. They would rather prefer to buy the good or service before it actually goes up in price. So remember, expectation of an increase in price level will shift the demand curve of money to the left because people will prefer to buy the good and service today. However, an actual increase in the price level will shift the liquidity preference curve to the right, increasing the demand for money basically. Alright? And then you can work it the other way around for price uh, expectation of a fall in price. If there is an expectation of a fall in price, the effect is going to be opposite. So if people expect prices to rise, they may reduce their money balances and purchase the goods and assets now, leading to a fall in the demand for transactionary balances. That's liquid liquidity preference. If I expect that prices are going to go down, then what will I do? I will not go and buy the asset today. I will wait. I will wait for the price to fall and then I am going to go and buy that asset. So essentially, if you are expecting prices to go down, demand for money balances will be higher. And if you expect the prices to go up, demand for money balances will be lower. You would rather buy the asset. Expectations of a change in exchange rates. Students, exchange rates essentially affect what? 
they affect our um, demand for the currency. Uh, if you are expecting exchange rate to go up, you are expecting that the currency will appreciate, what will you do? You will hold on to it till it actually appreciates. You will not, you know, you will not go and sell it today. Why? Because you will get lesser currency in exchange. So this is very simple. If you are expecting, for example, in this case, have you put a pound sterling? Yes. If you expect the pound sterling, for example, to increase or appreciate, then people in the UK are going to hold more uh, pound balances, right? And if they expect it to depreciate, they will go and they will sell it today, get the higher value that they want. They don't want to lose on the because of the fact that the uh, pound has come down, right? So they will. If they expect it to appreciate, they will hold more pound balances. If they expect it to depreciate, they will hold less pound balances. They will sell it today before it actually does depreciate. So this is about expectations, all right? So essentially, students, we've got it all together. We can come to a conclusion. Uh, remember, expectations play a very vital role in determining the uh, demand for money or how much people want to hold in the form of cash. So whenever there is a period of uncertainty, uncertainty means what? Uncertainty means risks. Uh, people cannot predict very clearly as to what the inflation rate would be or what the interest rate would be or what the exchange rate would be. Now these are periods of uh, turmoil or let us say um, when there are political changes happening, there are economic changes happening very fast. So it is very difficult for people to predict and by, by the same token for Theory to predict what might happen. So we say that in a period of political and economic uncertainty, there is uncertainty about inflation, about interest rates, and exchange rates. And so it is difficult to predict people's expectations. It's difficult for them to predict and difficult for the economists to predict. And difficult to predict shifts in liquidity preference curve. So because uncertainty leads to more risk, it is more likely that people would prefer to hold wealth in the form of liquid assets rather than holding it in the form of uh, some illiquid asset which is going to die of their money. Alright? To refer to more details on this, you can refer to the book of uh, your A-level textbook of Hamford. You can refer to a uh, book by uh, John Stoneman, Dean Garrett and Alison Wright.